Another day, another scary study keeping us up at night. It's annoying, especially considering that I check under the bed and in the closet every night. Not to mention, I sleep with my favorite stuffed animal to protect me from scary signs. But alas, here we are. There's a new study making the rounds indicating that fasting, and not even severe fasting, but intermittent fasting, leads to hair loss. Or at least that's what the news articles say, like this one, and this one, and this one. You get the picture. So, is there any truth to it? Well, the study is very much real and hot off the press. And in this study, they did extensive research into the topic, including many mice. But before you breathe a sigh of relief thinking, oh, another mouse study, I'm good. I did the exact same thing until I get to supplemental figure seven because the researchers buried a randomized controlled trial under piles of mouse data. Never thought I'd say that. So how about we uh, skip the mouse work and go straight to the human data? Okay, the researchers split people into three groups. One group maintained a normal weight maintenance diet. The second group used a modest 18 hour fast to six hour feeding window, but also aimed for a weight maintenance diet. Then the final group was a calorie deficit with no fasting. So we can see the layout of the eating times colored in this chart. Everything in white is the non-eating windows. So the only differences are the eating times, at least that's the assumption. So we can verify that by looking at the average intake on the left here and the body weight changes on the right. The orange is the control and the intermittent fasting is the light blue box, the TRD condition. As we can see, they're on par with the control condition, indicating that they may have been fasting, but they were eating enough during the six hours to maintain their weight, unlike the designed uh, calorie restriction diet on the far right, the ERD condition. Okay. So the researchers had participants on each of these diets, but at the beginning of the study, they shaved a section of their scalp and then measured hair regrowth over time. And what did they find? Well, let's look at the hair regrowth. Again, the intermittent fasting condition is in the middle. If there's an asterisk above it, that indicates a statistically significant effect. As we see, there were no differences between the normal diet and the calorie restricted non-fasting condition, but there was a reduced hair growth in the people using a caloric maintenance intermittent fasting nutrition. So the news articles weren't making it up, but is there more to the story? Well, I think so. If we look at different size hairs and the actual density of the hair shafts on the scalp here, we see there are no differences between the groups. So these data indicate that hair regrowth is slower, but the density of the hair is unchanged. So to me, this is just telling me that your hair will grow more slowly, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll lose hair or the number of hairs themselves. Now, there are some additional nuances here. One, the human study lasted something like two weeks no, actually, I think like 11 days. Ultimately, while this does inform on the growth rate, I'd really like to see some long-term data indicating an actual reduction in the thickness of hair once hair is supposedly regrown to a previous hair length. For really striking results, check out one poignant datum from the mice. On the far left, the mice are shaved, butt naked, and as time passes, as we move to the right, AL is the non-fasting mice, the control mice. Then each condition on the left is a different uh, severity of fasting from 21 hours fasting to 19 hours to 16 hours to 12 hours. I'll go ahead and tell you that the mice were still eating the same amount and the exact same food. But as we can see, there's a stepwise reduction in hair regrowth rate in line with the severity of the fast. In addition, there's more data that the researchers get into using mice that indicates some worry if we replicated it in humans. Now, to be clear, as we long know, 
It isn't a one-to-one -one comparison to look at mice and apply it to humans. In addition, especially from a time component, an 18-hour fast in a mouse is a drastically different from an 18-hour fast in humans. That would be equivalent, if we were to try a ridiculous equivalency game, to several days fasting, if not more for a human. I imagine one's hair might not be too keen to be grown back quickly if they ate once every several days or possibly once per week. Anyway, the researchers put a lot of work into this and described the mechanisms that they believe cause this in detail, which I'll cover in the extended version of this video that you're watching, if you're interested. It's included for the Physionic Insiders, along with all of my other work. It's linked in the description. As it stands, though, my takeaway is we're making too big a deal about this at this point. In humans, there's only proof of slowed hair regrowth from a very short study including men and women. But there's still no evidence of a long-lasting or actual loss of hair thickness effect. So, if you're extremely cautious about your head hair, you'll want to avoid intermittent fasting. But otherwise, I don't see enough reason to be overly worried here until we receive more evidence. If you're not watching my breakdown of the mechanisms through the insider version of this video, then I'd invite you to check out my other publicly available work right here. See you there.